Get ready as we step into the world of overpriced football stars. Meet the likes of Jaden, show me the money Sancho, Ansu, earning while chilling Fatty, and Callum coin flip Hudson Adoy, among 10 others who've turned earning big into a league of its own. Before we even begin, we're doing a special giveaway for all our loyal subscribers and we want you to be a winner. You have a chance to win a brand new jersey of whichever club you want and even have it delivered to your doorstep for free. And all you have to do is three simple things. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like and share this video and stay in the comments which club shirt you want. And that is all. Let's discuss Jadon Sancho's move to Manchester United. The transfer fee was quite substantial at £73 million and and he's earning a high weekly salary of £350,000. However, his performance on the field hasn't met the expectations. He scored only 12 goals in 82 matches, which some people consider to be lower than what was anticipated given his transfer cost and salary. It's like he's trapped in a real-life FIFA game but accidentally chose the beginner mode. Someone please tell him that the goalpost is that big frame with a net, not a Snapchat filter. With all this hype, we were expecting fireworks, but it's with more like a damp sparkler. Now, another overplayed player who's on the same bus as Sancho is Ansu Fati. Ansu Fati came onto the scene like a whirlwind of awesomeness. He skipped the whole practice with the reserves thing and dove headfirst into Barcelona's A-team. He dribbled like a squirrel on energy drinks. But guess what? The fun train took a detour. One run in with a Betis guy left his knee doing the Macarena. Ouch! Barcelona had a plan to help Fati's knee get better by making him do exercises twice a day. But surprisingly, his knee didn't like it and got worse. So he needed to have four surgeries on his knee. This is more surgeries than most people have birthdays. Instead of getting better in three months, Fatty had to take a long break for almost a year to heal and do rehab. Like taking a break to watch Netflix. Now, Fatty mostly sits on the bench during matches. Even though he doesn't play much, he gets paid £230,000 every week. This is more money than some of his teammates, like Ter Stegen, who is the goalkeeper. Fatty is really good at earning money while not playing. Elsewhere, Atletico Madrid's president, Enrique Cerezo, must have thought he won the lottery when they snagged João Felix for a jaw-dropping £111 million. Flash forward to now, and the cash registers are still ringing at £240,000 per week. They went all in at the football casino, but it's starting to feel like they bet on the wrong horse. Felix's grand entrance was overshadowed by a string of muscle injuries, making his time at Atletico more ouch than oo. With 131 games under his belt, Felix failed to meet the expectations of his manager. And, well, Stamford Bridge didn't exactly scream Felix's new home. Chelsea said thanks but no thanks to a permanent deal. The rumour mill's been working overtime ever since he returned to Atletico, where he's got a contract hanging around until 2027. Speaking of overpaid players, another name that comes to mind is Callum hudson Adoy. He was seen as a super talented player as he moved up in Chelsea's youth system. This made Bayern Munich really want him, so Chelsea gave him a new contract, maybe worth £180,000 each week and some extra rewards. But things haven't gone as planned. He hasn't reached the big success that had Chelsea and Bayern competing for him. He has only scored four goals in the Premier League for Chelsea since 2018, showing that he's had trouble scoring. Coupled with that, his loan move to Leverkusen didn't help to get him back on form. And oh boy, the almost Thierry Henry dream turned into more of a snooze fest. Anthony Martial and Manchester United are in a bit of a pickle, with rumours flying that the Frenchman's suitcase is half-packed ready for an exit. The main trouble? His wallet. He's like the guy at the party who insists on splitting the bill even though he ordered the lobster. So, young Martial swayed over from AS Monaco back when he was basically a baby-faced rookie, but he didn't exactly become the United poster boy for greatness. In injuries decided to gate crash his party and now with the new kid Hoyland showing up it's like they bought a bigger speaker to an already awkward dance floor. 
To top it off, this bloke's pulling in around £250,000 every week. You could say he's earning enough to buy his own football team. No wonder his potential new clubs are doing a double take, trying to figure out if his fancy footwork matches his flashy paycheck. Now, about the whole Maguire overpriced debate. Seriously, have you seen last season? It felt like with Maguire on the field, Manchester United were playing with one player down. I mean, £190,000 per week for what exactly? It seemed like he was inviting the opponents over and handing them the ball and saying, here, have a goal on us. But hey, I'll let you be the judge on that. Taking a page from Maguire's playbook of being overpriced, let's talk about Tangai Ndombele. After some impressive performances in Lyon's midfield, Tottenham Hotspur, who usually spend wisely, shattered their bank to grab Ndombele in 2019, spending a whopping £62.8 million. They even made him share the title of highest paid player in the squad. But now he seems to be more like a professional bench warmer, trailing behind the likes of Pape Sar, Bissouma and Madison. And guess what? These guys are earning less than half of what Ndombele's raking in. It's like he's collecting a paycheck without even breaking a sweat. Speaking of extravagant salaries, let's shift our focus to another top earner in the league. Kai Havertz, now seated among Arsenal's top earners, is said to be drawing a remarkable salary that surpasses others by a significant margin. This news was quick to make the rounds following his move to the Emirates. However, despite the impressive financial standing, there have been doubts raised regarding the wisdom of his acquisition. His finishing skills have come under particular scrutiny. In the 2022-23 season, Havertz's shot conversion rate decreased to a mere 9.86%, with his big chance conversion rate faring at an uncomfortable 22%. In his initial matches with Arsenal, the story doesn't seem to have changed much. As the new season began, Havertz managed to touch the ball at least 22 times. Likewise, meet Mason Mount, who found himself in an overpriced gang of players. Surprisingly, he caught Manchester United's eye as their main summer catch. After three rejections, they finally coughed up the £60 million Chelsea wanted, even though his contract dances its way to the exit door in 2024. And guess what? He's now chilling among Old Trafford's top five cash magnets. But with his current start to the season, he seems overpriced. Lastly, Wesley Fofana. The French player's injury history is a major worry for countless Chelsea supporters. With a weekly paycheck of £200,000, he stands tall among the club's top five earners. But it's like being at the peak in earnings, but hitting rock bottom in terms of playing time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so that you never miss out on new content. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye!